A lot have happened since last week. This is the time of the year where it's getting too hot for the cool season crops and it's just time to start planting all of your heat loving crops outside in the garden. We are going to have a heat wave this weekend. Temperatures are expected to be in the 90s, which is really hot. A lot of the cool weather crops that I have growing here are definitely not going to do very well on it. If you're new here, my name is Mari and I'm gardening in Queens, New York City. And this is going to be week two of the weekly garden tours that I'm going to be doing through the 20 22 growing season. We're going to do some harvesting too today, which is really exciting. I was like, when I can show you guys what I'm harvesting from the garden. Last week I started the garden tour right here in this upper little balcony that's part of my backyard. And I want to show you how my green stock is looking right now. So as you can see here, this is looking a bit different than last week. I have already harvested a few things. It's looking nice and lush green, but also got so hot that a few of the things in here bolted. And you can see there are smaller pockets in here where I have new things. I have put in some basil in here, this black pansy, which is really pretty. I had started this from seed, not the basil there. And I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these other lettuces here. This is going to be so warm this weekend. I don't wanna risk those guys getting bitter. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this here to the base. And just harvest the whole thing. So pretty. I'm gonna put this basket here, turn this planter. Harvest this one too. This is a butter lettuce. So nice. This one here, I am not going to cut down because it's the one I talked about last garden tour that I really, really enjoyed it and came in a lettuce mix pack. This is what happens when it's too hot. When I say bolting, it sends this center stalk here and tries to go to flower, tries to reproduce. So it sends this up, make these little buds, then go to flower and the flowers then will turn into the seed pods. And once the pods are dry, like most seeds when we harvest them, then they're ready to be collected. Now let's keep going with the harvesting. That was a nice one. Look at this perfect little head of lettuce. And this beauty over here too, this huge Merlot lettuce. I think it's only one plant. The leaves underneath always get little wilted because it gets squished in there and then, oh my God. Look at this color, how gorgeous. I'm gonna put this right here on the side. We're gonna keep harvesting. I have a few more things underneath there that also need to be taken, but this is, looks so nice i usually like to harvest them right before i eat but because it is going to get really hot what i'm going to do i'm going to keep them nice and cool in my fridge i'm going to wash them well keep them in the fridge and because they were just harvested from here they sometimes last over two weeks in there it's pretty cool i'm still going to be able to enjoy some fresh lettuce from the garden for a couple weeks actually there's a couple more butter lettuces in here that i also want to harvest so this is too small of a basket we're going to go ahead and get those other two really Nice and have it so nice. Very good, one more. I'm gonna have to get another basket. I already had here, thought this would be for the other planters, but I'm already gonna put this in here. You now because of this heat wave, I'm gonna have to take all of them out. I wish I could leave them a little longer because I do love eating fresh lettuce, but when it gets too hot, it really changes the flavor and it's not very enjoyable, so. One more. I can't believe I already got all of these. I did a huge harvest last week too i'm gonna put it show you guys a little clip here and now just less than a week later i have all of these again that's pretty exciting i'm very grateful that i can have all these lettuce for a couple more weeks at least so before i move on down there and start harvesting i will just show a few things that are here so this is still the peas it grew a little bit more from last week it's still doing well i moved the peas that were there here as you can see uh, it's a little bit cooler I guess and I think it's a little happier yeah he's already setting some flowers look at that it's gonna be a purple potted pea there's another one yeah it's another one open on the top I have another one there so maybe in a week or so we're gonna have some peas too I planted this a little before that I think a week or two before so these are the same variety but this is probably going to be giving us some peas soon here there's another variety of pea I talked about it last week too and look how many flowers even on this other side he has put in only one week. I bet that I could probably find some baby peas. Oh yeah, look at that. Those are the first baby peas of the season. So adorable. <laughs> I can't wait to see how those are gonna turn out. I'm really hoping they will do okay with the heat wave. And one more thing I wanna show you, you see this? All of this dirt everywhere. Probably a squirrel came here and did this. And the worst part is that they don't even eat. They literally just left this radish right here. I saw this last night when I came home 
instead of fixing I kind of left it in here because I wanted to show you guys that we do have some squirrel damage here too so here on this side I moved I put some peppers in here I think they were there last week I can't remember but I wanted to put them on this side and I put a tomato plant here instead of the peas since tomatoes do love the heat and I hope that this will grow very well right over here this is a cherry tomato variety this is a sun gold tomato and already has some flowers look how exciting it is and I'm gonna go ahead and just move them like this to pollinate them real quick I have tons of bees in here but you know it doesn't hurt every time I pass through it I like to give it a little shake just to help out and he's going pretty well this is the one that I put it out before the ones in the plot are doing really really good I say they because there's a few other ones below there they're also doing great behind here too we have this beautiful orchid clean nasturtiums check this out they're showing themselves to us so this here got a lot more blooms too I'm gonna grab this basket here and leave that one there because I'm still gonna put some other stuff in here actually let's see if I can fit one more lettuce there because I'm gonna need space so, there we go. So everyone here is looking really good too. I have another orchid queen nasturtium there. Look how pretty. So pretty. I love them. This is my favorite variety. So pretty. These guys are also growing really well. I'm not sure if this second tomatoes are right there in the last garden tour, but now I have two dwarf tomatoes in there, miniature varieties. They're supposed to do really good in these planters. Those are called orange hat tomatoes. They're also setting some little flowers, which I'm so excited for. Here on that side, the strawberry is also full of flowers. And check this out. I have a baby strawberry in here. Up here, lots of mint. My parsley is going to seed, which is kind of sad, but I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of this. They're kind of choking this beautiful lemon thyme that I want to let it grow. So I'm gonna take some of these out. Mint's very invasive and get everywhere, but I love using it. So I'm gonna take this all out, give it a very good trim before the heat wave, and hopefully this hit these guys that do well. This sorrel back there, it's going to seed. And I've never seen a sorrel seed before or a flower, so let it go to see how it's going to look. This time it's starting to fill up. The tatsoi put on a lot of beautiful growth, but it's also going to seed, so that's kind of also going to get harvested. On this side, I have already taken out that kale that was getting everywhere last week, and I put it a sweet shard in there. They also do well in the summer, so hopefully that will be okay. I thought the yellow will look nice against the brow of the planter in this purple in here. This kale is growing nicely, getting picking up a little bit after I took out that huge one that was shading everything. And this broccoli, I also have harvested the top. Now you can see the side shoots are all getting really big and it's ready to be harvested too. Look at this one, it's pretty good size. I'm gonna take the whole plant out again because Again, the heat, broccoli doesn't really like to be in super hot conditions, so I'm taking this out to make some space for something else in that pocket. I'm also going to take some of this oregano. It's getting really big and I wanted to encourage a bushier growth. You could also dry this. You can just hang, hang it upside down, which I do all the time, and I do little herb bundles. And here's the strawberry. Look at this. I have a bunch of babies in there. There's one, two, three. Another one forming two. Another one here. That's super exciting. We're gonna have our first strawberries of the season very soon. I might leave this tatsoi here. It just looks so nice. Look at the difference, how healthy and nice this looks. And this one's a bit damaged. I think it's because it's getting shaded before you didn't have a chance to thrive so much. Wow, this is just so perfect. Look at that. See if it even fits, but oh, not too bad. You will just stay here for now. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this little guy too. So it has more space to grow. Pretty full now. It's a lot of food, which I'm very grateful for. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside so they stay nice and cool. The day is now starting to warm up. And we're gonna keep going to see how the rest of the garden is looking. Look at this cauliflower. How much it has actually grown in just one week. I have put this loop here. This is one of the what metal wire hoops that I had for the winter that were and my raised beds over there. So I put it in here in those two pots, these two cauliflowers. And what I'm gonna do, because it's going to get too hot, I'm gonna cover them 
so they don't suffer from the heat. Usually giving them a little bit shade is usually helpful. I'm filming this on Friday and you guys are seeing on Saturdays. Actually, I'm preparing for the heat wave tomorrow and I'll leave it cover the whole weekend because I'm going away for the weekend for my friend's baby shower and I won't be home to wash the garden so that's why I'm choosing to cover this make sure to give it some shade and at the same time protect from bugs coming here but before I do that I will take a look at all the leaves underneath make sure there are no eggs in there so they don't hatch and then I'm gonna go ahead and cover that's a good thing for pest control with brassicas too you can cover your crops because when it warms up is when they, all of these bugs tend to come out and do some damage. I love this little morning light that's hitting up. But let's move on to the raised beds. And we're gonna do a little bit more harvest in there too. I forgot about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab another basket. Okay, so before harvesting, look how wild this raised bed looks. That side looks a little better, but this side with these perennial flowers that were already in the property. <gasps> oh my God, the peony opened. Oh, that's so beautiful. Look at that. That's so pretty. I did not see that before. It was just like this early in the morning. That's amazing. I'm so lucky that this was already here. I get really excited with flowers now. Once I started gardening, I just wanted to do vegetables and I learned the importance of flowers for creating habitat and to introduce diversity and its importance for the pollinators and obviously for the added beauty. So I now love flowers in the garden too. But this here, we're already here when we moved and it just came out in the spring. I didn't even know what color they were. I have planted some tomatoes here and you can see the scale is getting so big that's kind of taking over the bed so what i'm gonna do to create some space more airflow for them i'm gonna go and harvest the outer leaves and that should help with making a little bit more space here i'm just gonna grab right with my hands kale leaves are very easy to harvest just by breaking them so let me take these bigger ones out right here now we're gonna move on to this one over here which is huge i don't know what kind of kale is this it was in a mix huh? wow that's nice just put it here in the basket look at that making so much space this is a beautiful kale harvest now i'm moving on to the dino kale this is the lacinato dino kale variety this is my favorite one for texture and flavor and again if you have too much you can always blanch this and freeze it, but we are probably going to eat it. It lose a lot of volume when you cook it too. But this is just going to be eaten through the week for us. Look at that. What a gift to have all of this food just straight from the garden. Let's go ahead and put this inside too. I guess it looks a little better without all the kale. There's some airflow here i was thinking to cut these peonies to put inside my house too but they just look so pretty i might just leave them here if i was going to cut them here and down there that would definitely give a lot more space for that tomato so i decided over the weekend but this tomato here is also setting some flowers which is really cool this one here let me see i also took some of the suckers out how these other tomatoes are doing fine all of them are setting blossoms look at this growth I believe last week they were just through here, now they're all the way to this second ring, so that's pretty exciting. This sunflower here is also getting really big. Here on this side, nasturtium is starting to pick up. The peppers are, this guy here, the jalapeno is growing really well, but they are not growing as much. It is a little shady in this spot, so maybe that's why, but it's okay too. This was also just an experiment to see how they would do. In the back there, I threw some sunflower seeds, and apparently they're all germinating, which is cool. I'd love to have some sunflowers up here to frame. There's an okra that I also put some seeds in here. I sold two seeds in here that both germinate. I'm gonna wait a little bit more, see which one of those seedlings do better, then I'm gonna thin them out. Now that I got closer, I also noticed we have some this is a malagueta pepper so it's like a looks like a Thai hot pepper and it is already producing some fruit very exciting it's from Brazil the seeds are from Brazil and a neighbor a friend of mine here gave me the seeds from her own pepper plants I topped some of these off like this jalapeno and that one's gonna take a little longer to produce but this this is full of side shoots and probably gonna get a nice bushy growth but that's it for the raised beds i think that's the most exciting thing just to see the tomatoes and the kale harvest and obviously now that beautiful 
the only that just decided to show itself there. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the pot garden to see what's going on there. I did some work there this week. If you watched the previous video you saw, I put a trellis up and I finished doing some planting. Let's check it out. I'm here at the plot garden right now, our other garden space just around the block and everything is looking really good here. Newest additions is that I built this arch this week and planted all of those cut flowers over here. I have all different kinds, they're very little right now but hopefully they will pick up soon. Potatoes here on this side in the buckets are looking amazing, very nice and healthy, they're growing well there. They're kind of catching up to be all of the same size. These ones were first and this one kind of came out later. I also have put all of these poles there to give support to the tomatoes. Those are the pipes that were already here in the plot that my neighbor had left here. So we're using that and they soon will need to be all tied up. I'm so excited with that art trailers back there. But my vision here is to kind of have this as a, the entrance of the garden. So this is all going to be cut flowers to attract the pollinators and to add a little bit of beauty to the front of the space. And I think that's gonna look very nice right kind of the front of the arch. Here, it's the herb garden. I put some cilantro in here. If you watched the last video, you saw me doing that. It's looking really good. It's going to seed, but I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it go to flower and leave it in here for the pollinators, for the bees. The other stuff from the herbs, the fennel seems to be still the ones that's been growing the most. Here, this bronze fennel. Everything else not very different from last week, other than the fever few. Fever few got a little bit bigger too. I think I planted most of the stuff here a little bit too early, so most of them could be stunted. So we'll see what's gonna happen in the next couple weeks. But now, check this out. I have already planted the base of the arch. So I did some weeding in here, but I put a little dahlia that the ones I got from Hudson Valley Seed Company that I posted about last month, I think. This one I started inside and had a sprout, so I already put it in here. And then I put it another one that I got from Bear Creek's farm. So let's see if it's gonna grow. But this one definitely it's looking good, so I hope that we're gonna have some dahlias. It's my first time growing them. I planted another dahlia tuber around here. I'm gonna have to weed some more here. And another one here. This is also from the one that had previously been sprouted. Now in the base of this side of the trellis, this is a Supremo Cucumber, this is a Kajari Melon, the other seedling kind of died there. But hopefully this guy takes off, otherwise I'm gonna try to grow from seed again. Here I put in some of my butterfly peas that I think I didn't acclimate very well because some of the leaves look a little bit sunburned, so I hope it does well. But put four in there, not really hopeful that they're gonna do very well this year, but even if they climb a little bit, it will just already add some beauty. This is here is the squash bed, this is a Lemon squash, little yellow squash. This is a custard squash. It's a petty pen type. That one back there, Tetra squash. We are gonna, I'm gonna come back and weed a little bit more this side. And I have a little trellis. It's kind of like an A-frame. I'm gonna put that in there and see if they grow this way. We haven't had a chance to come here and cut this peach tree yet, but it is sick, so it is going to be cut out soon. And let me go over the flowers here, what they are, because I said in the last video, I'll give us a little bit more details on the garden tour. So I'm just gonna tell you the varieties right now. So right here I have a zinnia. Back there, there are some asters. This is a giant orange marigold. Those are some celosias. They came in a mix. These ones are clearly looking like they're gonna be red, but there should be different colors. These ones here are terracotta celosia color. Hopefully they do well. Here is another marigold to put here in the front. This here is a row of snapdragons. They're looking very really little, but I hope they will take there. These two over here, I didn't label it. I don't remember what it is. We'll see it for the season. This here is a calendula. More zinnias. This was from um, Queen's Lime Mix. And some of them, unfortunately, got dug out and eaten by something there. So there's only two left on this side. And then a little row on that side. So that's a serpent cucumber that I planted over there in the back, hoping that it will use this as a trellis to grow. And back here, we got some volunteer tomatillos, like I was expecting to, because we grew a lot of tomatillos here last year, and I was hoping that some of them would germinate, and they did. So I actually came around here, and there was a lot of them growing, so I picked out the little ones and left two big ones because tomatillos have more than one plant to pollinate. 
and then if another strong one comes around here I'll let it go too. So Zinni has already talked about this is a little roll of amaranth, it's red amaranth. This is yarrow right here, one nasturtium and then just a basil there and that one over there looks like it didn't make it. I don't know what it was. Then those three here are black straw flowers. I did a little dried flower arrangement with my amaranth last year and I really really loved it so the reason why I got these straw flowers is because they're supposed to be very good dried too and I kind of want to do some more fall arrangements at the end of the season with the stuff that I grew. This area here is kind of like weeds, I gotta kind of clear this out and I might plant something else here, I was thinking maybe, I was thinking some flowers but I think it would be too tall and cover everything, I don't know, maybe I'll put some more zinnias here. So let's take a look at the beds here, passing this arch, now the entrance of the garden. This one here right next to the squash is peppers and I have here, I have planted a few more. These are some habanadas. This is a buena mulata, no buena mulata there, a couple puma peppers. This is a roll of the malagueta peppers, a Brazilian hot pepper. This is a jalapeno, I think it's a fish pepper. And there's a few, I think those are poblanos back here. And this is a biquinho, it's a Brazilian mild pepper too. Here I actually planted this long squash. I didn't have a place for it. This is one of the seeds I got from Hawaii. From here to that side is all tomatoes. So over here are all tomatoes. Some of them here are starting to set some little flower buds. And I can see that some suckers are coming out too. So I have to come here sometime this week and start taking out the suckers and maybe even starting to tie them up over here on those Mostly they're doing really good. I also gotta come here and weed. More tomatoes in here, all doing good on this side. Oh, this guy has a blossom. Look at this. So this is actually, I think it's called cat facing of fasciated blossoms. I'll put this spelling over here on the screen. Usually the first sets of hurdle tomatoes can come out like this. There's a lot of blossoms actually kind of fused together. I have no idea how many but it is looking pretty big. A lot of people like the way hurdle tomatoes grow and they get very funky but if it's really really big like this I like to take it out so I'm just gonna pluck this one out. And let's take a closer look so it looks just like a bunch of tomato flowers all fused together. Over here on this side looks like there's another one that's looking huge. What kind of tomato is this? This is the Tornsborn terracotta. They're different, see? But I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one out too. They're both the first blooms of the those kind of tomatoes. Here on this side we have some more tomatoes. This is like, I need to put a lot more compost on top of this cardboard. You can clearly see that I didn't put enough because the cardboard is mostly showing. But when I planted them, I make sure to dig pretty deep so the roots actually they have access to the soil that's underneath. And it's cardboard, hopefully at least helps suppressing the weeds. But it looks like an animal did something there. Look at that. Mm. This spot's like wild. Because we don't come here all the time, we don't really know what happens a lot. Sometimes different animals will come here and kind of play around too. That's why I'm not planting any leafy greens or root vegetables in here because I don't know what kind of animals come in here and you know we're in the city and they could be carrying disease and stuff so everything here grows up above the soil. Even the scale here, even though they are leafy greens, we're not gonna eat the bottom leaves. We're gonna wait until it grows taller and we start picking the leaves there around. But if it was a lettuce, we wouldn't be able to eat it. These egg plants in here, they're starting to look yellow. I'm not really sure why. Now I'm thinking that maybe I planted them out too early. I don't know, let's see I had them out by this time and they were happy, but we'll see what's gonna happen. All of them are doing this, even the ones in my backyard. And that board is there is definitely getting eaten by something on the edges. I think it's birds, but I, I don't really know. Over here on this bed, I have planted, sowed some beans here too. So I put it the cage that wasn't the peppers, since they're getting a little bit bigger, here to protect the seeds that I put in here. The way to the end, I have put one squash there, but I once the corn come up, I would plan to come here and do maybe a couple more different squashes too. We might even do a bush type because I don't know how well this will grow, We're growing like sprawling over everywhere. I guess it would be nice to have the leaves too as mulch, but last year we had a lot of powdery mildew and I'm pretty sure they're gonna, it's gonna be a little bit hard this year to, to deal with it, so I have to, we really have to think about like how it's going to be our winter squash 
situation here. Even the summer squash, I got problem you do too, and the cucumbers. Even though it looks like I'm planting a lot of things really close, at least the squash and cucumbers, I'm trying to give them a little bit more space to see if they'll do better this year. And this is how the plot's looking on week two. Not as much, but since the weather is starting to warm up well now, hopefully in a few weeks it's gonna be full of lush green too. And I'm gonna end the tour here. Thank you so much for watching today. If you're curious to see how everything was looking the week before, just make sure to check out this video over here and check the week one's garden tour. Don't forget to hit that like button too and subscribe to the channel to see the progress of this garden through the growing season. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time.